building safeguards into Europe's banking system to prevent another crisis and ensure European savings. But how to establish a banking union without burdening the taxpayer? Hello and welcome to People First, the EPP Group's monthly program on issues with impact on people like you. Joining us to answer some of your questions is Corinne voltman -Cole. You're a vice president of the EPP Group here in the European Parliament, and you're also a member of the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee. Yes, indeed. And quite, uh, quite a very important responsibility, considering the fact that uh, we had this banking union negotiations um, and a European Parliament election coming up. Now, how did much did that election speed up or slow down this process? Well, uh, it encouraged me to uh, really fight for an effective and a credible banking union because when the cre uh, banking union is in place it should be able to, to resolve a failing bank over the weekend and it took a lot of negotiations to get there but finally we did and I'm very proud on behalf of the EPP I'm very proud on this result. Well Cohen, before we go to the questions let's go to our report to find out a few more details about this banking union. The near meltdown of Europe's banking system during the financial crisis of 2008 triggered the deepest recession since World War II. It was a wake-up call to policymakers that Europe-wide oversight and safeguards were urgently needed. In addition to reforming economic governance and requiring a consolidation of public finances, there were calls to create a European banking union. So far, the plan approved by the European Parliament is for three pillars. A common banking supervisor or single supervisory mechanism would have the power to monitor major banks and intervene if necessary. The European Central Bank has been chosen to assume that job. Second pillar, a single resolution mechanism to bail out or to assist in closing down a troubled bank, funded by a common fund collected from Eurozone banks. The ECB is also to have that role, though there could also be input from the EU institutions or even national governments. Third pillar, a common deposit guarantee of up to 100,000 euros, guaranteed by a common Eurozone fund. The plan is for the ECB to begin its bank monitoring in November this year. The single resolution mechanism is to come into force in 2016. The deposit guarantees are so far insured only on a national level, but eventually a Eurozone fund is to cover them. Some countries, like Germany, are concerned about greater financial burdens and are reluctant to grant wider powers to the ECB. Some of those new powers could require a change of the EU treaty, a lengthy process. But EU policymakers are urging action now to begin putting the safeguards into place before a crisis comes knocking again. And what about those countries that have opted out, like Denmark, like the UK? I mean, how do you have them part of this banking union? Well, ECB banking supervision will now be established uh, for all banks uh, in the, inside the Eurozone. But all not yet Eurozone member states can opt in, can, can be part, and some of them are really triggered to do so. And in any case, for the, those member states who don't want to join, when we have a more credible banking system inside the Euro Eurozone, it's, it's also good for the European countries who are not in. So mm -hmm. in any case, they will benefit from this. Okay. Um, there is obviously concern among some Europeans. Here's, here's one question from one of them about this concern. Bonjour, uh, je suis Roland Mesmac, je suis belge, et j'aimerais bien savoir si uh, l'union bancaire ne va pas in fine être payée par le consommateur. Okay, well, they're not supposed to, but is there a risk that they will? Well, uh, there is much more uh, assurance that not the taxpayers, but that the investors uh, will pay for a failing bank, because that is now assured in a European uh, directive, so European legislation, which uh, will be implemented in all the member states of the European Union. And inside uh, the banking union for the Eurozone countries, uh, it will be even more harmonized. So, uh, this person will get uh, much more assurance, and that's increase, uh, uh, incredibly important, to avoid excessive risk-taking. Uh, so I'm very proud on that. Okay, and then another question is one about sovereignty. Here's a question from a country that has opted out of the euro. My name is Klaus, I'm from Denmark, uh, and my question is, uh, will this banking reform give too much power to the ECB? 
Well, it, it, how do you counter that argument? If it's not the ECB, then who? Well, indeed, uh, at national level, it are in many cases the national central banks who supervise also their banking system. But isn't this like the wolf guarding the hen house? Isn't that, shouldn't you, there, there be a, somebody above that to watch? Well, uh, it is pretty, uh, there's a pretty uh, thick wall between the ECB's monetary tasks and the ECB's supervisory tasks. And Denmark is one of the countries already, already interested uh, to join. And this underlines that this uh, well independent uh, supervisor of, uh, say, a great uh, uh, yeah, how it's credibility uh, can really help uh, to get this uh, supervision established in a good way, also for the Danish people. Okay. There's another question about, and this could be a Pandora's box, the European Treaty reopening the European treaty so that banking union can really work to add more tools, I guess, to be able to do that. This is a, this is a concern of a, a German student. Here he is. My name is Stefan Falke and I come from Germany and I would ask if man the Lissabon Vertrag ändern muss for the Banking Union. Yeah, so what about that? Well, we have pro proven in the past uh, years that we can establish a banking union within the borders of the current treaty. And I think it's important that we don't have to wait until the treaty changes. And that was actually a main issue during the, the last five years. We've yeah. done much more than one could imagine. And for the future, maybe treaty change can be an issue, but it's not needed to establish the system as we have it now. And then some would argue, well, look, crisis seems to be over. We're riding it out. So why have banking union? Why now? Here's a question from somebody about that. Bonjour, je m'appelle Suzanne Dupont, je suis française, j'habite Strasbourg. En quoi cette réforme va pouvoir changer les choses et est-ce que cela va pouvoir permettre d'éviter une autre crise éventuelle? Okay, so well, you know, the things have calmed down. So why now? Well, that is the biggest risk that uh, due to the calming down of the markets uh, that we don't deliver on what we have promised, which is a, a, a credible governance uh, and reforms implemented in member states, and which is uh, ECB banking supervision, a credible banking union. And when we don't deliver, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the next crisis will be even worse for the people of Europe. Therefore, we have to continue and be deep determined because we don't want a, a Europe as we are currently in with 1% economic growth. Yes. We want a Europe to, to really grow so that these young people can find jobs and a good future. And the banking union is crucial for that. And here's something a bit related to that, what, what you were just talking about, is that there is what be many believe is a silent crisis still going on, the fact that you don't have enough affordable credit for companies, for individuals, and uh, this is something that an Italian woman is very worried about. Mi chiamo Bianca Sandri e vengo dall'Italia. I miei problemi circa il sistema bancario sono essenzialmente i costi che sono troppo alti. E poi ovviamente le aperture di credito, perché in questo periodo, soprattutto in crisi, le banche hanno chiuso i rubinetti. So, how can banking union help this? Well, in Italy, uh, where this lady is from, uh, they indeed face high funding costs because the markets don't trust the banks. They don't think the banks are credible. Uh, and when we get this ECB supervision uh, in the starting phase, these banks will be torn inside out in order to show whether they are really credible. And that will help this transparency, uh, recapitalization if needed, that these banks are trusted and then the funding cost costs will go down automatically, mm. which is extremely important for the SMEs in, in Italy, Spain, uh, Ireland and other countries. And you think the fact that you've reached now an agreement between the European institutions on this plan, do you think that instills confidence that could maybe help the markets? Well, indeed, I think uh, the very ambitious uh, agreement we achieved in itself will help, but also that we will implement it uh, pretty soon uh, in next autumn, this autumn of 2014, the ECB supervision will start and the next year also the Banking Resolution Authority. So it's very quickly. Very good. Corinne Vautmenko, thank you very much for thank fielding you. these questions.
That's it for now on People First. Find out more about the activities of the largest political force in Parliament by checking eppgroup.eu. Until next time, thanks for watching.